On this episode, we talk about two bite-sized German SUVs from Audi and Mercedes-Benz, look at the updated Honda CRV, and answer an awful lot of questions about Canada next on Talking Cars. Welcome to Talking Cars with Consumer Report. I'm Tom Mutchler. I'm Gabe Shenhar. And I'm John Linkov. On this week's episode, we compare and contrast the Audi Q3, which is parked behind Gabe, with the Mercedes-Benz GLA 250, which is not parked behind John, because at this time of year, any day of testing is an important day of testing, so we're out getting fuel economy numbers. But the car is too busy. The car is too busy. It's too busy to show up. It's rude. Mm. It's almost rude. Um, Gabe. Well, maybe it had a reason not to show up. Why would you think the Mercedes shouldn't show up, Gabe? Because when you're comparing and contrasting the Q3 and the GLA, uh, there's, uh, yeah, the GLA, I think, has some reasons to, uh, to be embarrassed about. Wow. John? I disagree with Gabe. I concur. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, Audi seemed to say, it's a small SUV, this is the segment, we're going to make it, you know, just make it fit the segment. The GLA, you know, just boosting up the problems of the CLA so how doesn't does, give it, make how, it any better. How does it not fit the segment? Well, it's, 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 it fits the segment because it's much like the X1. It doesn't really look like an SUV. It's kind of a hatchback. Oh, it's a little all, odd Yeah, looking. these things all look like hatchbacks. Well, this at least uh, has a style. I mean, it's, 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 it, it's what you expect it. It's, it says, I'm an SUV and I'm nothing else. So, yeah, I mean, both of, the, both of these uh, SUVs are kind of like smaller, uh, not smaller than the GLK and the Q5. Right. And, but, you know, they cost $40,000. Well, I mean, you and, know, uh, you're right. That's forty grand. A comparably equipped Q5 would be forty seven. Right. So, so the Q3, uh, whereas, you know, it doesn't look uh, anything special. I it mean, like it, it kind of comes across as a, like another Q5, only with slightly odd dimensions. And proportions and yes. the GLA. I mean, it looks like a sharp-looking car. I mean, it looks it like does. a really. I mean, I get a lot of looks with this car when I drive it. You get a lot of looks anyway, Gabe. But yeah. thank you. Uh, it's awesome. Anyway, uh, but the car itself is really not all that there in terms of noise isolation, the way the transmission works. Yeah, because uh, it's a dual clutch. The, the, right. Yeah, the. The. Um, the ride's not that. The great. ride's not that great. Visibility the whole powertrain is not all that refined. Yeah. John? I think it has a lot of the faults that we found with the CLA. It's not as bad. Uh, That's bad. damning with faint right. praise. Yeah. It is not as bad Here's as the, the CLA. Thing. All, all, the, all the Mercedes-Benz GLA, CLA levers are going to come out and tell us that it's selling well and blah, blah. I don't care. Okay, great. Great lease numbers. They move a ton yeah. of them. Fantastic. Sure. They moved a lot of Volkswagen Jettas when they first came out with the redesign, and then they fell off the oh, face of the Oh, back with the Jetta Because people so. lived with them for a year Well, or two. Mercedes is playing a numbers game yeah. here. I mean, they became a really very effective marketing kind of company, and they move a lot of metal these days. Mm -hmm. Audi, on the other hand, is more of a boutique brand. I mean, it's part of a, uh, a larger corporation. The Volkswagen Group has yeah, one of the several, largest corporations there is. several brands. Yeah. So they want to keep the Audi a little more exclusive. So they're not playing that same kind of number. Oh, sure. Game. And I'll tell you what. You know, but, you see all these press re press events about the CLA and then the GLA, and they throw out the GLA 45 oh, AMG, sure. and everyone you everyone know, raves about it, babbles over, and and you know, and is ready to put their own money down. I'm a journalist. I put my own. Money it's eight percent most of the of the take rate is going to be a 45 You're so right. you know what if that's... an engine an engine does make a car better in this case but it still doesn't whitewash the faults of the vehicle and that's the thing you go back to the base model the regular one that everyone's going to be owning it's small it's narrow you, you, you lower this the second row uh armrest and you see the two prongs for the head restraint i mean Classy. it's it's I mean, I'm going to invent. It's a cost the, a, the AMG version is like a more expensive WRX kind of car. Ha! I'm, uh, glad, I'm glad you said that because <laughs> our, our, uh, GLA, STI, right. our GLA 250 was parked next to our um, XV Crosstrek Hybrid. Oh, yeah, and I took a picture of that. And it's like, yeah. wow, yeah. That's, that's what you get for another you know, $17,000. I don't know. i got to be honest. I'm struggling with this whole segment. I mean, theoretically, demographically, my wife and I, two professionals, no kids. We are like the perfect. Empty nesters. We are the perfect, and yep. forever empty, we are the perfect <laughs> people for these cars. And in fact, I drove that Q3 home for Thanksgiving. I wasn't too excited about it. The first hour and a half into the trip, you know, I'm warming to it. You know, hey, I sit up high and all my stuff fits in the back and I've got all wheel drive because it was snowing a bit. And by like 
hour three. I'm like, what the hell? You know, the seat's hard. It's, I'm, you're cramped in there because there's not a lot of room when you try to squish all this, this together. So the driving position's not all that great. It's 40,000 bucks. And I just get to thinking, man, I'm driving a Volkswagen Golf with 30 more horsepower and all wheel drive that costs 15,000 bucks more. I would have rather had our Golf. Yeah, you could say that. I mean, I just uh, did. That's, uh, that's certainly a valid uh, point. I mean, a lot of people are going to uh, think, oh, it's an SUV. Again, the Audi oh, badge. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, and, uh, and, you know. There's and, no question and, people don't like us, hatchbacks. In, over. Yeah, in truth, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. In truth you, you really get some Audi qualities here in terms of uh, the interior uh, ambiance and uh, the, the way it rides and, and handles, and it's pretty quiet. It, no, no, you're right. Yeah. You know, and that's the first hour, you know, I'm noticing, hey, this is pretty quiet. Hey, this rides pretty well. It's got decent power. I mean, I'm only getting like 25, 26 miles per gallon with it, you know, so that's nothing special. But no, you know, it's, it's the, the simple fact that I don't think you can sell upscale hatchbacks in America unless you call them SUVs mm -hmm. and you, you puff them up a bit. Sure. Yeah. I mean, the car has been it's, out in, in Europe for about two or three years, mm -hmm. so now it comes to, to the U.S. and, uh, you know, whatever, uh, I mean, they're, they're just going to sell every one of them. Sure. They will sell every one of them, and then uh, I'll give Audi credit, at least you're not going like BMW, having a, the, the two-door series has a four-door version, and the four-door series has a two-door version, and there's a three-door hatchback, five-door version of the three-door. I'm like, already you know lost. There are, you know, fine, it's a small SUV, that's where the market's going, they want to bring more people in because their prices are going up. You know, yeah, sure. It, it, it's a business decision. Oh, no, no, the business, the business in. decision is ingenious yeah. because yeah. you increase volume. Uh, the, people like luxury brands. You know, they're still a little gun shy of the recession, although car sales are up. So yeah. you can get a luxury brand for cheap. And, and, and you're not getting a wagon. They're, they're, you're not getting any more small wagons. It's going to be this or a yeah. hatchback like the GM. And they're careful with it because uh, they don't want to infringe on the Volkswagen brand. Mm -hmm. Sure, but it gets kind of funky. I mean, at $40,000, it's a, it's a weird price. Our last Equinox, uh, Chevy Equinox LTZ V6, and that was like $36,000. I can buy a Durango, uh, our last Durango, loaded, 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 it was like forty two. I mean, it's a really funny price. Well, and I, sure, I, I a lot it. of stuff I, overlaps I, here. And it was also hard to get into I can buy a Dodge Charger that. for the same price. Yeah, you should. It was hard to get that at forty. You know, they kept, they, they've dumped a lot of the prestige level cars. Oh, on, really? You know, Gosh. with the 1920-inch wheels and, you Ooh. know, and, and more options. They won't ride as well, this was a, This was somewhat of a stripper. Yeah. At forty grand, you know, okay. it's got the power deck and it's got a uh, navigation system. You know, but there, there wasn't much else. But you can get much higher in that car. Sure, easily. Something that a lot more people are going to buy is the Honda CRV, one of the best-selling small SUVs there is on the market. It's got you some bet. Got some updates for 2015. Walk us yeah. through them, Gabe. Well, uh, I mean, yeah, it's uh, the most important thing, other than the, um, the the usual nip and tuck here and there on the outside, is uh, a little more chrome. Is a little more chrome, but the CR the CRV gets a CVT transmission, kind of uh, um, matching the Civic, the Accord, the Fit now, and uh, and that uh, might. Uh, do something for fuel economy, which you know the Honda, Honda the CRV has been falling behind falling here. Behind yeah, it. right. And uh, and it it actually is one of the better CVTs out there because it kind of masks those CVT quirks of you know rising revs before any acceleration happens and such. Mm. But uh, what really bugs me the most is the this radio, this touchscreen radio is just awful. Yeah, up level touchscreen radio. Um, it's, it's, it's a mess. It's, it's a mess. It's, it's extremely small. They, they run some hard keys down a vertical spine on the left side, which are even smaller. So you can't see oh, them. You can't oh, see it's, them. it's channeling the worst of afternoon market radios. I, 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 I exactly. think Honda said, you know, you know, we've done really well in reliability and, you know, we're okay in fuel economy. We're going to have the worst radio out there, and that's why we're going to get a lot of talk because wow. they have gone that way with all their vehicles. I don't know what the heck's going on. It's, it's, it's weird because you think back a couple years to Honda, you know, they were ergonomically. Brilliant. Perfect. Yeah. They are fantastic. Right. And now they just can't seem to make a modern touchscreen right. to save from, their life. From I've, simple, intuitive, they just decided let's make it like, let's go the 180 degrees and make it the most convoluted, you know, in, complex, it, annoying thing on the earth. The thing is you look at it and it doesn't look that hard. The fonts are big, it kind of buzzes when you touch it. But you try to do something and it's like, I don't know how to get there from here. And you'll learn it eventually, but you know, there's a lot of systems you don't have to learn. Yeah. You don't have to put the and effort that means in. You don't, more, have, you don't have to take your distraction. That means Factor. more distraction, more time with eyes off the road, 
when yeah, you're not duh. watching Lane watch. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have a friend who was in the market, and he, I brought this home. He came over, he took a look at it. He had driven, last year, he had driven mm. a new one at the dealership, mm -hmm. and he went with the previous gen. You know, I would too. And I sent him in, in that direction. I said, buy I, that I, one. I, I would have too. And I'll tell you, you know, it is a pretty good CVT. And I'm not one of these guys who hates CVTs. Just a lot of auto journalists love to hate CVTs because they sure. just love to hate CVTs. And it's, you know, it's in the, it's in the, Auto, it's auto, the DNA. It's in the auto journalist code of conduct. Right. I must right. hate CVTs. Mm -hmm. This one's got a funny vibration sometimes. Mm -hmm. at, at idle, you get this tingle. And it's not like we're rocking NPR too hard, you know, or that we got the bass cranked up on the podcast that we're listening to. My wife's like, the car's tingling. You know, it lost a little bit of the refinement that Hondas were so good at. I'll also say it also lost some of the ride comfort because yeah. we stiffened the suspension a little to make it maybe handle Sporty. a little more responsibly, but it, it really uh, lost some, some compliance there. Yeah. I mean, I would say if you can get a, what is it, a 14 with some money on the hood? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if they want to blow that out, get it. Certainly still a good car. Yeah. I mean, know, it's, it's still a great package. really it's functional. It's a great package. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I'm not sure all the changes were improvements. Let's go on to questions. High Tops ask, I am looking to replace my 2009 Mazda 3 with something a little nicer. Sedan or coupe, under 40 grand, new or current generation. My priorities are a great interior, a must, great ride, smooth transmission, and looks classy upscale. It should have decent pep, but a sports car is not required. It does need to be enjoyable and comfort during a 20-minute commute. It's not a long commute. I live in Saskatchewan, which is kind of like North Dakota, but with worse roads. My current thought is the Cadillac ATS. Can you broaden my choices? Expand his horizons, Gabe. Sure. So, well, in, uh, up there in Canada, um, you're going to need heated seats and heated steering wheel, most uh, in an all-wheel drive and I'd get snow all tires. Drive. So uh, BMW uh, xDrive 328iX. Oh, oh, no, no. Here's the trap. Yeah. And, okay. We, I have been accused by some of our Canadian fans of being the sole reason why other countries hate America. So wow. it's you. It is me. Oh, fair enough. It is me. <laughs> It's me. Um, you got to watch out for the Canadian, ex the currency exchange. Because 40 grand in Canadian money is only buying you about a $37,000 car here. Yep. Okay, the loonies. Yeah, sure. Right. Um, that's why the NHL's having problems, let me tell you, folks. <laughs> All the hate mail, that's, that's, a, <laughs> that's a, well, our cars, it, John, at Twitter. <laughs> I mean, if it can li live with the tiny back seat of the ATS and then not so refined uh, engine and not so brilliant fuel economy. And of, the lousy uh, Q. And the lousy Q is, is really, a, I mean, the lousy Q actually doesn't work in those cold weather awesome. situations. Awesome, that's yeah. great too. So okay. yeah, let's, Super. Uh, let's be careful there. Um, I mean, I'll be, I mean I, if you've heard any of the earlier shows, I love driving the ATS. The steering is pinpoint sharp. It is, the ride, it's got a nice ride handling balance. Mm -hmm. There are so many annoyances with that car though. Also, it's going to have to have a ton of incentives to get at your price. Um, but, uh, you know, if he wants to be a proud uh, Canadian, and he probably still has a Blackberry too, um, then uh, why not uh, Why not a Buick uh, that's Regal? That's Cars Gabe you know? at Twitter. Yeah, I, 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 I'm with a Buick Regal. Buick Regal, all-wheel drive, all -wheel drive, uh, all -wheel drive. Uh, healthy 259 horsepower, nice interior, excellent infotainment system. It's built in Canada. There. Like, there you go. You can Anything go, else? John, your you thoughts? You can go with a, Anything a, a else? Windsor built 300. Oh, I'm, I'm really impressed. Uh, <laughs> I do have some knowledges up in the heads. <laughs> wow, I'm really impressed. Yeah, actually, I, I, that, 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 that would be my thought, would be a Chrysler 300. You're going to spend every cent of your $40,000 Canadian. Yep. But Large you, car. It is, but, you know, if, if, if a nice interior and a good ride and quiet are yep. your... Or, or, or really your wheelhouse, that's... Yeah. There's a couple other things. There's a legacy. Of, I mean, you can I don't go know boring if that's with a, scale. you know. Um, it's boring, it's bland. You can Volvo get a legacy 60. solid. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, there are choices. Yeah. I, I wouldn't go with ATS. ATS. I wouldn't go with ATS. Too small, too, too much baggage. Yeah. Uh, next question from Nave 57 Can you please compare the 2015 Mazda 3i Grand Touring and the 2015 Golf TSI SEL? Well, we tested an SE. Yeah, uh, so it's close enough. That's a, it's a it's very a appropriate kind of comparison. Yes. Yeah, are either of them built so, in Canada? Oh no, 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 no. One's in Mexico, one's in Hiroshima. There you go. Yeah. So, 
Well, anyway, uh, I mean, there's a big difference between these cars, even though handling-wise, both are probably the best in the class. Uh, yeah, the, I, and I, the focus, focus, focus yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, the Golf is is uh, head and shoulders above the Mazda in terms of uh, ride comfort, quietness, interior fit and finish, controls. Jonathan, even cargo capacity, you know, 250 carry 250 pounds more than the Mazda 3. How do you know that? Oh, really? I, I've been doing some writing. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I, I've been thinking and writing. Oh Impressive. wow! So. Uh, yeah, we the, don't the, think or write. <laughs> See, it's, it's they just easier. drive around the track. All That's right. Um, yeah, it's it's. I'm not going to go like this, and I'm not going to tell you, you how bad you know the golf. You we're not going to go there. Yeah. Um, you know the golf has grown up a bit. It's it isn't as 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 small and, and cockpity feeling. But you know what? I spent a lot of days in the GTI recently. I spent some time in the golf. Um, you know, it's a nice nice grown up car, but it's also really refined, particularly. For that segment, you know, it is. It makes you think it's in a. You're, you've stepped up a class. I would take that over the Mazda three any day. And the controls are a heck of a lot better than what you're going to get with any up level Mazda with that knob. And with all that the, the rip off the M drive yeah. knob yeah. and a, one and thing a not I, great touch screen. One thing I will throw in that the Mazda has proven reliability record, whereas the Golf not yet. Yeah. Oh, even that said, though, uh, at least for its first year, the Mazda with the up level. Uh, audio system in the upper level that had some problems. Yep. So uh, it will. You're right. In the long yeah. term, I would expect the Mazda to be better than the Golf. I am going to defend. Is he also from Canada, by the way? Because everybody no, drives a Mazda three in Canada, right? I don't Everyone. know. It's a good. He, he may be. Okay. If you are, good for you. Right. And if you're not, good for you too. Um, I'm going to defend the Mazda three. Uh, if you get counterpoint. The, yes. Um, it's what I get paid to do. If you if you buy the stick shift. I have not driven a golf stick shift in many years, but I'm quite confident that the Mazda 3 has a better oh, stick shift. Mm -hmm. Nothing me. matches a Mazda 3 for stick shift. Uh, but, other than maybe yeah. a Miata and a Civic Si. But there are only three people buying stick shifts. So. They're all Canadian. Yeah. Um, the, is it available even in that version? I would bet it is. Um, because okay. remember, the Mazda 3 is one of the best-selling cars in Canada. <laughs> We're stuck on the Canada, Canada <laughs> name. I'm sorry, <laughs> audience. Uh, you know, also, the Mazda is a little sharper handling, I think. You know, I think no, the no, steering's a little sharper. That's we, we've debated that. Yeah, at, at well, we can continue item. to debate that elsewhere. Well, we can't yeah. because we're actually coming near the, the end of our time. But <laughs> yeah, refinement Volkswagen, maybe a little more pinpoint handling, maybe a slightly and a little more bit driving better experience reliability. and reliability. Mazda also, great. fuel economy. Fuel economy. The Mazda's, fuel economy the Mazda's is going to uh, put out oh, four yeah. or five miles. Mazda takes better, the cake there. Better in the Golf. Yeah. Uh, so you know, actually, but they, fuel's cheap now. Yeah, that, that, you, so you can, 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 a, can a 2500 pick up then? <laughs> that's, that's right, with a heavy, or yeah. uh, with the 6.4 liter. But in yeah. Canada, it's still expensive. Uh, there, yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah. There, it, this, is, this has been a very global uh, episode of Talking Cars. North American, <laughs> regional. <laughs> Thank you, it's very, very good. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. As always, we enjoy bringing it to you. See you next time. <laughs>